Hi guys and welcome to a new video, so today I got my cracked Galaxy S8 over here and today we are going to install and review One UI with Android Pi on the Samsung Galaxy S8, S8 Plus and Note. Right guys, so as you can see I've already installed One UI on my Samsung Galaxy S8, so here you can see this is the S8 and um, as you can see it works really fine on this uh, phone here, it will also work really good on the Galaxy S8 Plus and on the Note 8. Right guys, so as you can see I've got a uh, Galaxy S8 over here which has One UI on board already and first of all I want to show you the update so I want to show you how One UI looks like on your phone and then we are going to do a normal installation part. So the reason why I want to make a review first is that I want you to decide whether you like One UI or you don't like One UI. Because if you like One UI, you can definitely watch this video till the end and install One UI on your phone. But if you don't like One UI, you should definitely rethink installing this update on your phone. Right, so that's it. Now let's start with the review. Right guys, so now let's start with the lock screen. So as you can see, this here is the lock screen. It looks pretty similar to that which we had on older Android versions with the only change that the clock is now on the left. You can still use your old setup for the clock which was centered over there like Sony, um, but this here is the new uh, standard One UI look of the lock screen. You still have your um, phone and your camera over there and yeah, so the fingerprint scanner or the fingerprint sensor is still uh, the same, so it works really fast, but you can see there's no animation when you unlock your phone or there's a small laggy animation over there. Still, it's much better than the um, fingerprint which we have on the Galaxy S9 Plus. So as you can see, the S9 Plus is much slower. So this took like a second and this here uh, takes less than a second to unlock together with the fingerprint. So the fingerprint scanner still works really nice. It works even better than it does on the Galaxy S9 together with One UI. Right, so the system has got a full redesign together with One UI. You can see you have not new icons over there. The uh, Samsung browser icon is still the old one because I got the old version on board. But you can see the dialer is uh, quite different now. The, the uh, camera icon is red now. And you can see these are all the new icons. You can see the clock uh, icon looks different. The My Files icon looks different. So they've changed the um, icons over there. And you can also see that you have a new icon which is green for the calculator and on the S9 over here you can see the calculator still has this old design on the S9 where on the Galaxy S8 we have um, a new icon for that so if you ask me I liked the older one more but this year matches, uh, matches the um, design of One UI much better so this is a nice thing. Right so now let's move on to the notification panel. Right people, so this here is the new notification panel of One UI. You can see you got your rounded toggles back which you had on uh, Marshmallow. Um, but, and you still you can pull down a notification panel twice. So, and you can see the main difference is here. So if you pull down a notification panel twice, you can see that your toggles are at the bottom now. So now they are much easier to reach. So on Android Oreo, you had to go all the way up to just to reach the um, Wi-Fi toggle for example and on Android Pi it's much easier to reach as you can see. Um, at the top you got your clock which is much bigger now. So in Android Oreo the clock was really really small at the corner but now they have made the clock much bigger and there's a big blank bar at the top I would say and yeah so you still have your three dot menu you can still change your grid size of your um, toggles over there still the same settings over here and yeah you also have a shortcut for the status bar settings from here and you can still change your button order which is really nice and there are almost no new buttons, so um, the only button which is new or the only two buttons which are new is the navigation bar. So here you can enable or disable the navigation bar. If you enable the navigation bar you will get these new um, navigation buttons, um, but they have basically got the same feature which they had in Android Oreo. But you can still enable the full screen gestures which um, basically have still the same uh, function but you need to swipe instead of pressing on the button. So this is something which is really nice. 
So, um, the second toggle and the last toggle which is new is Dolby Atmos. So, Samsung has gave uh, Dolby Atmos to uh, the Galaxy S8 together with One UI, but it only works together with your headphones. So, you cannot use Dolby Atmos together with your phone speaker, which is quite sad, but hey, you can use it with your uh, headphones at least. So, there are four different modes. So, the one is for uh, music, the other one for voice, if you do phone calls etc and the other one for movies um, it works great it's there and it's nice that Samsung gave us a new feature which was only present on the Galaxy S9 and so on right guys so now let us talk about the settings um, so here you can see that the settings app looks pretty similar to the uh, notification panel so here in the notification panel we have uh, we have our elements at the bottom and our information at the top and here you can also see that our elements which we use are at the bottom and we have got uh, the settings label which is basically our information and you can still scroll up to get your old look so you can see that this one here looks quite similar to Oreo but there's another there's another small difference so the first one is that the icons have been changed again just like in every Android upgrade but we have also got uh, bubbles so you can see that the connections button has got a single bubble but for example the sounds and vibration and notifications are in a bubble you can see these uh, categories belong to each other and because of that they are in the same bubble just like um, software updates developer options and about phone um, so this is something which is really nice so you got your settings much 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 better organized than it was on Android Oreo right so now let us talk about the apps which uh, which we got so this here is a dialer you can see that the dialer looks almost the same but there are some small new things you can see we have our keypad our recents and our contacts at the bottom now so these tabs used to be at the top and now they are at the bottom so they are much easier to reach now but the way how the interface looks is almost the same um, so the other apps like my files you can see there's almost nothing different but you still have your normal one UI interface and you can scroll down to get your information over there and your elements which used to be at the top are at the bottom now so this is something which is nice so you got the uh, one UI look on in almost every app but if you go to the clock app for example you can see it's still present here but if you go to the timer you can see that there are still a lot of elements which are at the top so you can see the plus icon is at the top this three dot menu is always at the top so one ui is not fully finished yet if you ask me so there are still a lot of elements which are at the top for example this clock here should, uh, could also be here i mean you know it's not fully finished if you ask me but i'm pretty sure that samsung will improve one ui with time so to conclude we can say that One UI is made for you to make the uh, experience of using your phone with one hand much easier. But the problem is that there are still a lot of elements which are at the top and which are basically not easy to reach with one hand. Um, so another problem is the volume panel so you can see the volume panel is at the top even though stock Android has got its volume panel on the side and much more at the bottom so this volume panel is really hard to reach and if you want to change the volume panel of your media or of your other things you will definitely need to go all the way up and pull down to the bottom so this is something which is really bad and you can see there are still a lot of elements which are at the top which basically do not match to the principle of one ui and this is the reason why i think one ui is still not fully finished Right guys, so the last thing I want to talk about is the recent apps panel. So here you can see that the recent apps panel looks quite similar to that which, which we have on iOS 7 from 2013. And you know, it looks like they have copied the recent apps panel from iOS 7. Of course, iOS 7 has also got a lot of elements from Android, but I still think that this is no reason to... Um, to you know to steal the idea of apple i mean okay the recent apps panel of um android oreo was really 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 good i mean you were able to see up to four apps at the same time without scrolling it was really easy to handle and this one here is even harder i mean you can only see one app at the same time and you will always need to scroll in, uh, in order to find out which apps you have opened in the background so on android oreo you were not forced to scroll between these apps and, I mean, there are two bad things over here. The first bad thing is 
that it's much harder to use and the second bad thing is that it's even copied i mean they have copied it and it got even worse i mean this is something which is not a really nice move from google and i think that samsung should not implement this recent apps panel to one ui for example sony has still got the Android Oreo recent apps panel, even though their phones are already on Android Pie. And Samsung basically stick with the Android Pie recent apps, which, you know, are really hard to use. You may like it, you may not like it. I think most of the people don't like the recent apps panel now, but hey, I mean, um, you will definitely need to use it if you uh, upgrade your phone. So this was my review about One UI. So if you liked One UI, you can now install the um, update on your phone. If you didn't like One UI, um, you can subscribe to my channel, leave a thanks or leave a, uh, leave a like if you like the video or leave a dislike if you dislike the video. And um, yeah, so now let us install the ROM. So first of all, the very first thing which you need to do is to download the ROM on a uh, on an external SD card. So you will definitely need an external SD card inserted on your phone and you'll also need to download the ROM from the description of this video. So. Um, your phone does not need to be uh, rooted. The only thing which you need to have is um, a phone which works 100%. So, after you have downloaded the phone and after you have pasted the um, the uh, firmware to your external SD card, you can turn off your phone. And then when your phone is turned off, you will need to press the volume up button, the Bixby button and the power button at the same time to boot to the stock recovery. Right guys, so this is the stock recovery, now you need to wait a few seconds. Right, so now we are there. So the thing which you need to do is to go to update. Uh, from SD card so you need to navigate with your volume keys here and then you will need to uh, select this here with your power key and then you will need to go all the way up until you find the firmware which we have downloaded so this here is the firmware basically go go there with your volume buttons and press on the power button to install the update so this process could take like five minutes or maybe even longer than five minutes you just need to wait so as you can see the installation process is finished now and the phone has booted so you don't even need to wipe your data so it will work completely without wiping your data um, you may face to some issues if you don't wipe your data, but in the most cases it will work completely without wiping your data. Right guys, so this was the installation part and this was the last part of my video. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a dislike as always. If you have questions, you can um, join our Telegram group. Um, the link is in the description below. And yeah, 